Let's walk through the code in this LabVIEW project. I'll begin by pointing out that the same code I'm calling RTPC main runs without modification on the PC host as well as the RT target. I'll begin by reviewing each of the process loops at a bird's eye view level, if you will, and then come back and do the details after that. The first process loop is the TCP sender. When the ping control is enabled, we do the activity, otherwise no activity at all. We have the destination IP address for the host we are trying to connect to, and then the message we are sending. Open up a connection, write the message, read something back, and if those are exactly the same, we declare success. Any errors that might get generated cause the ping button to get reinitialized back to its default value, so that way it doesn't keep running. And this loop runs twice a second. Next we have the TCP receiver loop. In this loop, we wait for a TCP connection request, and when one is received, do a TCP read up to 80 bytes, immediately echo that back, and then close the connection. The third process loop displays the primary IP address as well as all available IP addresses. We do this with string to IP. Use IP to string to convert that into dot decimal form. With the multiple output option enabled, it returns all the available addresses and the for loop reads all of those out. All three process loops are stopped using the notifier technique. The stop button is pulled in the TCP receiver loop and used to send a notification to all of the other process loops that causes them to stop. Now let's take a closer look at the TCP sender loop. TCP open needs the destination IP address as well as the port number. We use the same port for listening and sending. The timeout defaulting here for up to five seconds means we wait for that long or up to that long to establish a connection to the host. TCP write accepts the name that was keyed in by the user and then appends a carriage return and line feed as a delimiter. This part is important because on the TCP read function, we buffer the incoming characters until that carriage return line feed is detected. Note that that is not the default behavior of this function. Up to 80 bytes will be read by this function. The two output messages are compared, and when they are exactly equal, then we declare that as a successful echo from the receiver back to the sender. Let's move on to the details of the TCP receiver. Just prior to going into the loop, you create a TCP listener on the listening port number. The function wait on the listener then will wait up to 100 milliseconds for a remote connection request, and if no connection request is made, it times out with error number 56. That error is cleared, and then we try again. So this loop is actually going along at 100 milliseconds per iteration. On success, you have a connection ID reference, and this is used for TCP read, using the same read mode for the carriage return line feed. We then echo that back with TCP write, and then close the connection. Moving on to the third process loop, this displays the available IP addresses. The first version of string to IP is returning the primary IP address, and you can do this by not selecting multiple output. Using the same function with that option enabled means that it returns all available addresses, and then I'm using a loop to uh, print out each one of those. Also returns the available number of addresses. Now let's consider the details of stopping parallel loops with the notifier technique. Everything begins by creating a Boolean notifier and obtain notifier function returns a reference to that notifier. 
and that reference is handed off to the various instances of get notifier status, which recovers the value of the notifier and then uses that for the stop condition. The send notification function uh, is triggered anytime we have an air condition or the stop button is pressed that sends or broadcasts the notifier to all of the other loops. Once each loop has stopped, the air clusters are converged and then used to run release notifier. And then finally, TCP close connection is run using this reference from the original listener. Note that this is different than the connection ID that's generated by the listener that's used for the TCP read write process. Now I will wrap up here by locating the various function subpalettes. Look under Data Communication Protocols, TCP. And we recognize most of these at this point. So most of these are used. We also see the IP to string and string to IP functions. The notifier is located here. We have obtain notifier, send notification, get notifier status, and release notifier.